and welcome to Shell Point today for Wednesday, August 17th. I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. And I'm Rich Nation. Thanks so much for joining us today. On the program, Ruth Duber will join David Lee in his kitchen along with a special guest to show us a new and exciting way to cook steak. And we'll get you into the mood with the return of Jazz and Stuff. But first, don't forget about tomorrow's program, Legends and Legacies, Women in Fort Myers History. Come out to the Grand Cypress Room at 10 a.m. to learn about the civic-minded and philanthropic women of Fort Myers who fought for our first school, library, hospital, and performing arts center. You're sure to enjoy this intriguing program. Looking ahead to Friday, it's everybody's favorite beach day. Court pickups began on the island at 8.30 a.m. for a day in the sun, surf, and no doubt you'll enjoy the shade. Del Norwegian State Park awaits you where you'll enjoy a picnic lunch with a traditional stop for ice cream on the way back. The cost of the outing is $16, which includes the lunch. Ice cream, as always, is on your own. Like everything in our modern age, the latest inventions change the way we do things. Cooking is no exception. Today, Ruth Duber joins David Lee in his kitchen with a special guest. Doug Hayes, a very talented sculptor who's also quite a cook. Doug will show us how to use a modern cooking appliance called a sous vide. It enables you to cook meat and vegetables at an accurately regulated temperature. Here's Ruth to get us started with this week's What's Cooking at Shell Point. Hello, this is What's Cooking at Shell Point, and I'm Ruth Duber. And I'm David Lee. And we have a very special show today. I've been doing the show for 10 years, and it's amazing the changes that have occurred, um, not only in what we eat, but how we handle food. And I think it's always fun, even though we don't use it, it's fun to watch and see some of the new things that are around. So David, why don't you introduce your guest? I'd be glad to. Uh -huh. I, I, you, you may remember Doug. Doug Hayes was the sculptor who did Friendship Point, the herons uh, that uh, Maggie, Tr Maggie Tribby. uh, Tribby's, yeah, wonderful her uh, sculptures for you. And when I got to meet him, we got talking and we, had a, we both have, like Ruth, we have a love for cooking. It's a hobby of ours. Yeah, more than a hobby. But, yes, yeah. but at any rate, uh, Doug does some unique things that I have never done before, and I'm really excited to share it with all our friends here at Shell Point. So, Doug, thank you so much for coming today. Oh, thank you. It's been fun. So, we're going to do a, a steak a very unique way. You want to tell us what you're going to do today? Yeah, we're going to do a steak using a sous vide technique, which is basically a water bath with a very precisely controlled temperature so that we can put the steak in and we can get it to the exact temperature that we want. And then we can take it out and either refrigerate it or go ahead and throw it in a skillet and just get a, a nice sear on it. So this is the sous vide uh, circulator. It just works in a regular pan. Uh, it clips onto the side. Um, and then you have a digital readout on the top which tells you the temperature of the water, where the temperature is, and also what temperature you want. So I'm going to take it up to 129, which is on the high side of, of a rare steak. What's the next step here for us, Doug? Well, the next step, um, the water in the circulator doesn't actually touch the food, right? Um, mm -hmm. So what we need to do is we need to put what we're going to cook into a plastic bag, okay. whether it's steak, chicken, what have you. This is just a simple way. It is, just uh, a plain Ziploc bag. It's just a Ziploc yeah. bag, a freezer uh -huh. bag. The freezer bags are nice because they're nice and heavy. Because mm -hmm. um, you, you don't want any water to get in because obviously it's just going to water right, it down. Uh -huh. Right? So we want, a, we want a nice high quality freezer bag. And this is a nice ribeye that we picked up. It happens to be my favorite, Ruth. Is so it? Okay. if we're going to cook a steak, we might as well cook the one I like That's the best. Right. So we just... And, and we don't even season it. You season it after the sous vide. Uh, the, the water circulation, what that does, it just brings your steak up to that finished temperature. I see. And that's, okay. the, that's the trick to it. Mm -hmm. Then we treat it just like a regular steak, but we don't have to worry about getting it to the exact temperature okay. in the skillet. All right. So I leave the top of the bag open, right, okay. at first, and then we're going to take it over and set it in the water. The water is 
like I think it's got like it's at 129 so you can kind of put your fingers in and it's not gonna burn you so it's warm yeah, yeah. it's warm so the bag you want to get the air out so I just put it in and just kind of sidle it back and forth a little bit until the steak is all the way down in there and you can see that you get you have a good seal around it and then then we'll seal the top and what I like to do and this is something that I learned by accident now we're set, we've got our temperature, we don't have to do anything. Once we get it like about an hour, then we either put it in the refrigerator or cook it. The easy part, I mean, even though it does take a long time for it to come up to temperature, um, once you're done, right, you can put them in the fridge. So if you're having a dinner party and you, you can cook everybody's steak exactly the way it needs to be, mm -hmm. throw them in the fridge, right in the baggie, and then you know, 15 minutes before you're ready, you that can just sear them up. Much easier. Yeah. Right. So it yeah, does it make it brown. easy. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm assuming this is the one that you had in the refrigerator. Right. This is one that we cooked last night, and it's been in the refrigerator. So even though it's cold, it's going to be seared and then brought okay. up to a, a good temperature that mm -hmm. you know that's palatable. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have to worry about getting it to the temperature for medium okay. rare or Alrighty. rare because okay. this one's already cooked medium rare. Right. But now you season it, right? Now you, yeah, now we season it. And seasoning a steak is a very personal thing. <laughs> you know, everybody likes their own different yeah. kinds of spices. So uh, we put together, this is a spice rub. Um, it doesn't have the salt and pepper in it, but we just use some, some things that are on hand, a little bit of basil, um, just equal parts of each, a little bit of cumin, which is very aromatic, um, and uh, a little bit of paprika, which helps us when we put it in the pan to get... Uh, yeah, give the color. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, uh -huh. and some cr crunch, some texture from the t a crust. Uh -huh. um, and then a little bit of turmeric. So these are just personal for me. And then, of course, salt and pepper. And with a steak, if it's a good cut of steak, really just a little bit of salt and pepper is mm -hmm. all you need. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? Yeah. And maybe a little butter to finish. Finishing oh, with butter, it, yeah. I, you and Julia Child. I, 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 little garlic butter yeah, yeah, to yes. finish it off. Yeah. I, I agree, and um, you know, some people would rather use olive oil, which oh, olive, sure. olive yeah. oil mm -hmm. is really good for mm -hmm. high temperature cooking. Yeah. Personally, I use butter. I do too. What we'll do is just a little bit of our spice rub right here. I just go by what I feel like, mm -hmm. right? So we'll do that, okay, and a little bit of salt, not too much, and pepper, of course, lots of pepper. You can't have enough pepper on a good steak. Lots of pepper. Okay, and then we just pat that down, get it right in there, and then we'd flip it over and do the other side exactly the same. Okay, so now we're gonna put this in. We've got the oil up to, to heat. It's not quite smoking, but there's enough for it to start sizzling. And so we just let that sizzle for a few minutes. Notice what would you say? A couple tablespoons of oil that you put in there? Yeah, yeah you do want, you know, not quite a quarter of an inch covering the bottom All of the right. pan. Okay. So mm -hmm. when we sear in cast iron, of course, we're not relying on the oil to fry it. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. this one, since we are doing it at a lower temperature, mm -hmm. we really need a lot of oil in there to, to cook okay. and, right. and get a nice mm -hmm. crunchy crust for us. Okay, so now we're just going to turn this over and see we got a nice beautiful crust on it and a big part of getting that is the spice rub mm -hmm. um, and this is this is what I use it's just a little piece of stainless wire I put it in the steak pull it out touch it to your lips and you can feel that it's still cold you want to try that uh -huh. Uh -huh. so we put it in there Okay, and just pull it out and gently touch it to your lower lip. Right? It's still a little cool. It's still cool. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. Okay, so now we've got this up to temperature. I'm just going to pull it out, place it on the plate. Let's see what this other side looks like. See, the other side doesn't have a nice, as good of a sear as this one. So we're going to plate it this side up. And also with the olive oil, with the turmeric, you know, that color that golden color. That's picture perfect.
<laughs> Can I add a little something to this? Oh, of course. Since Ruth is going to eat this for lunch, let's add the butter. Voila. How's that? Thank you. <laughs> thank you, David. That so, looks so beautiful. I can't right. wait to taste it. Doug, thank you so very much. And if you're lucky, we'll save a little, Ruth and I'll save a little <laughs> bit for you here. But uh, the nice thing about this is you don't have to let it rest or anything. Mm -hmm. and oh, really? Yeah, because oh, okay. it's, it's altogether good. different. So we, we didn't, we cut it back to 100 degrees, which is where you want to eat. So I always like to cut my steaks and think about plating. And this one happens to be medium rare because that's the way Doug likes it. Now, kind of two of the ways Margie and I like to eat steaks are with tomatoes and mozzarella. and with wild rice and asparagus. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, Ruth, you know we have to decorate the plates. Absolutely. Huh? So, you can't have tomato and mozzarella without some basil, basil. on it. Uh -huh. And we'll yeah. put some basil around this one just to decorate. Mm -hmm. And Doug brought this wonderful, he loves this wonderful Italian olive oil that we can get at Publix. Yes. And Put a little of that, and oh, on the steak too. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, and to finish that one off, we'll just kind of put this right here. So there's one, and now with this one, um, I'm just going to sprinkle some parsley on it, and once again a little olive oil, and finish that off with a little decoration. You think we can have this for lunch, Ruth? They're beautiful. They're yeah. beautiful. So. Really fascinating process, and I thank you so much for bringing that to us here at Shell Point. Absolutely. Yes. And thanks for the wonderful sculpture that gives us so much say, peace and pleasure My goodness, too. so much talent in one, one oh, gentleman yeah. here. <laughs> so, well, thank you for inviting me. This has been a lot of fun, and I always enjoy visiting here. Oh, Shell Point. okay. You're wonderful. welcome anytime. Thank yeah. you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Bye now. Jazz and Stuff returns to the Grand Cypress Room this afternoon at 2.30 p.m. To get you into the mood, here's a preview. It is Wednesday afternoon and we are up in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands and since it's Wednesday afternoon that means it's time for jazz and stuff which has been going on in this room for 12 years I guess it's been. And I have with me two of the founding members of jazz and stuff, Bill Johns and Pat Specht. And uh, tell us a little bit about this whole group in the early days and where well, it came from. I'll let Bill tell you. Jazz and stuff was started in 2003 by uh, Dr. Bob McCollum, who lived in uh, Lakewood. Uh, he was an avid harmonica player, mm. and he loved to play the blues. And so he put out the word around Shell Point that he would, like anybody interested, to come over and join him in an impromptu music session, or a jam session, as mm -hmm. they call it. Mm -hmm. You know, the word jam is slang to musicians for improvise. Mm -hmm. So there were, f what, four or five of us, Pat, I guess, mm -hmm. were over here mm -hmm. in the Grand Cypress room. Nobody was here, just, and for an hour, we met at 2.30, and for an hour, we just sat around and played in, uh, in an impromptu way. And we continued to meet after that. Well, over time, uh, more musicians started to come in. They heard about what we were doing, and they would join up. Uh, residents from uh, the commons down here, they would go by the room and hear something going on, so they'd stick their head in and see what it was, and 
they'd come in, sit around, and watch what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you fast forward to today, which is what, 12 years later. Uh, right now we have 17 musicians uh, on our roster. Mm -hmm. We will have an audience every Wednesday from 50 to 80 people. <laughs> and we still play for an hour. You know, it keeps people going too, because I've had people come tell me, come up and tell me, you know, Pat, I felt really kind of down before I came. Mm -hmm. And after listening to all those songs that I knew when I was younger, mm -hmm. I just feel so much better when <laughs> I walk out the door. And that kind of makes it for me. Yeah. And I feel better after I get done playing sure, all music, that music stuff. Music does that. Yeah, absolutely. You really need to check it out. It's a lot of fun and you really enjoy it. So check out jazz and stuff. I'm Doug Potts, the Director of Long-Term Care at the Pavilion. I would like to invite you to join us at the Larson Pavilion on August 23rd at 2 o'clock for an ice cream social. It is a great opportunity to meet our amazing team and learn about the many services available to you at the Pavilion. There will be a short presentation discussing our rehabilitation unit, long-term care services, and memory unit, as well as the hospice program. We will be offering a tour of the rehab center, including our aqua therapy pool and occupational therapy suite. Please join us at 2 o'clock on Tuesday, August 23rd, and meet our pavilion team while enjoying a dish of Love Boat ice cream. Space is limited, so please RSVP to Randa at 415-5432. Hope to see you there. And now it's time for all of today's happenings, menus, and Village Church Connections. Welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley. And I'm Caitlin Van Scoy. And we're going to tell you the activities that we offer for you here today. But before that, I want to remind you all that you'll be getting your Academy booklet. This is the fall semester for 2016. Our activities today begin at 8 o'clock with the men's round robin tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Pickleball will be played at the game courts at 8 o'clock. And today's the day that Lily and Company Jewelers will be at the Resident Activity Center at 845. The Jurassi Travel will be in the Egret Room from 9 until 12. And the Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton will be in the Art Studio at 9 o'clock. 
At 9.15, card making and scrapbooking group will be down in the tarpon room. Our men's match play tennis will be going on down at the Woodlands at 10 o'clock. And at 10.15, the Model Yacht Sailing Club will be at the Woodlands Commons Lake. There's a Fine Mark Investment Roundtable at 10.30. That'll be held in the Oak Room of the Woodlands. Down in the Health Club at 11.30, we have Bar Ball Edition going on. That's it for the morning. Here's Caitlin for the afternoon lineup. Well, thank you, Bev. We start at 12.45 with the Health Connections class, Advanced Strength and Conditioning. That's in the Health Club, and that one is currently closed. Chess is going on at the Library Lounge at 1 o'clock. And then we move to 2.30 for Jazz and Stuff. That'll be at the Grand Cypress Room. At 3 o'clock, we have Pilates Stretch in the Health Club. And we round out our Wednesday with Prayer and Praise at the Village Church at 7.15. Well, we're so happy that you joined us here today. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Menus for Wednesday. In the Island Cafe, the sandwich special is a chicken parmesan sandwich with a side toss salad for $7.75. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are stuffed pork loin for $14.95 or chicken Oscar for $15.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm David Pavey. My wife Nancy and I invested many of our adult years in France in evangelistic and pastoral ministry. At one point, our little church in Paris rented rooms at the Bataclan Theatre on the Boulevard Voltaire where terrorists slaughtered 90 people on November 13, 2015. Eight months later, on July 14th, the French national holiday known as Bastille Day, a terrorist in the Mediterranean city of Nice drove a large truck for more than a mile along the beachside promenade through an enormous crowd of spectators who were exiting a fireworks show, killing 84 people and injuring dozens more. Years ago, we spent considerable time helping a church in Nice so could visualize the mayhem that ruptured so many families in that beautiful city. Little surprise, therefore, that the following story hit us hard. On July 26, 2016, two Islamist teenagers armed with knives and a fake bomb stormed into a French church in the little town of Saint-Étienne du Rouvray, a working-class suburb of the cathedral city of Rouen, in Normandy. They then forced an aged parishioner to film them as they slit the throat of the 85-year-old priest Jacques Amel as he was celebrating Mass before a small congregation. Frère Jacques, as he was called, was loved by all, a little like a grandfather, said a colleague. Fortunately, a quick-thinking nun, Sister Hélène, managed to escape from the church when she saw what was happening. Thinking I was going to die, she confessed, I offered my life to God. But she got out, and she immediately alerted the police, who moved quickly to shoot dead the two young terrorists when they exited the church. Eventually, the remaining two nuns and two parishioners got out alive, though not before one of them suffered serious knife wounds. The Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack, calling the two thugs, get this, soldiers. By what line of reasoning, I don't know. Historically, a church is recognized as a sanctuary, not only a sacred place, but also a safe place, a haven. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe, wrote King Solomon. Slaughtering an 85-year-old priest as he is celebrating the love of God in a sanctuary is the ultimate soft target and evidence of devil-inspired ignorance. The Sunday after the slaughter, July 31st, many Muslims attended Catholic Mass in churches across France in solidarity and sorrow following the brutal murder of the martyred priest. More than a hundred Muslims were among the 2,000 who were gathered in the imposing Cathedral of Rouen, for example. 
I thank you in the name of all Christians, Archbishop Dominique Lebrun told them. In this way, you are affirming that you reject death and violence in the name of God. Some of the Muslims sat in the front row across from the altar. Among the parishioners was one of the nuns who had been briefly taken hostage at Hamel's church after the priest was slaughtered. She joined her fellow Catholics in turning to shake hands or embrace the Muslim churchgoers after the service. There's a striking irony here. Fanatical Islamists who want Muslims to perceive Christians as infidels and enemies prompted many Muslims to do the totally unthinkable, attend Christian churches to demonstrate solidarity with peace-loving people. The priest has gone to his reward uh, the terrorists have gone the other way. The wicked bought a one-way ticket to hell, wrote the psalmist, according to a modern paraphrase. My thoughts went to the words of Jesus to his 12 disciples, most of whom finished their earthly ministry by being executed. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, he instructs his followers, Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. But I'll tell you whom to fear. Fear God, who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. The Apostle Paul was eventually imprisoned in Rome, awaiting execution, charged by the religious fanatics in Jerusalem, who had earlier accused Jesus Christ and, like him, delivered him to the Romans so that they could do the dirty work. In captivity, he wrote what became a significant portion of the New Testament. Unintimidated, he wrote, To me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To his helper Timothy, Paul wrote, God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but a power of love and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. Like the old priest, you and I don't know what persecution might await us, but we can all find encouragement in the words of our Lord to Christian believers recorded in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Thank you for tuning in once again to Village Church Connections. Thanks for joining us for today's program. Return tomorrow when Robin Church of the Salon and Spa will catch us up on what's happening in health and beauty this month. Resident Joy Ellen Ryan will give us a preview of her book talk taking place next week where she'll review three nonfiction titles. And fitness instructor Cheryl Cooper will show us some aquatic center games. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Wednesday, August the 17th. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. We thank you for spending your time with us today, and we look forward to spending more time with you tomorrow. Goodbye.